Hey, good afternoon, Refuge family. Hope you guys are doing great uh, this wonderful December day. Uh, let's go ahead and pray today. As we pray, we're gonna um, we're gonna get ready to get into the Word. We're gonna be talking about gifts today because Christmas is right around the corner. We're gonna be talking about the greatest gift. Um, and let's go ahead and get started and pray. Father, we thank you for today. I thank you for everybody uh, who's just joining us online and taking some time to get into the Word today as we look at what your Word would have for us, and more specifically, Father, what you have for us uh, as we look at what is most important. Amen. All right, well, it's Christmas season. It's December. Uh, I hope you have all your Christmas shopping done. I'm not sure if I have all mine done just yet. I'm one of those last-minute shoppers, um, and luckily, I have a wonderful wife at home who loves to do a lot of the shopping for me um, and with me, not just for me, but with me. Um, yeah, who's kidding? She's done a lot of the shopping. Um, this year, I promise I'm going to go out and do some shopping uh, for everybody that I need to buy gifts for as well. But as we look today at gifts and this time of the year of giving, it's important that we remember what is most important. Because as we look at this year, we aren't to be like children as they look at Christmas time and they constantly think about gifts, about material gifts, about objects that they can touch and they can taste and they can hold, even though all those things are wonderful. We have to look at the most important gift, and we have to remember that the most important things as life, those in life, those of us that are believers and follow Jesus, are the things that we cannot hold with our hands. We cannot taste, we cannot see them, but we can very much feel them with our heart. And so let's look at uh, Luke chapter 10, and we're going to be looking at Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42 today. We're going to look at a brief little story that's just a few verses long, but it has an incredible message for us. And there is in a profound word here that we need to remember all the time because we can fall into a pattern of thought or a way of thinking that really isn't in line with how God wants us to think. So Luke chapter 10 verse 38 says this, now it happened, as they went, that he entered a certain village, he being Jesus, and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. So Martha welcomed Jesus into the house. And she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word story set up. We got Martha, who welcomed Jesus into the house, and Mary, who immediately sat at the feet of Jesus. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. I love this passage of Scripture. I love looking at it, and I love the contrast that is made here between two different individuals. One individual who, out of a good heart, and a, a servant's heart, very much. She wants to serve the people that she has welcomed into her house, and she wants to serve Christ himself. She is busy and running around back and forth collecting things and trying to make sure that all the tasks and all the things are done, while her sister Mary is just simply sitting at the feet of Jesus, hearing his word. Now, we know when we study Jesus and we study his words that he himself, Christ, said that my word will never pass away. It will never fade away no matter what. And he reiterates that point here in verse 32 where he says that Mary has chosen to do the good thing and to focus on the word of God which cannot be taken away from her. Well, here's my uh, little kind of connection thought for us today. You know, years ago, there was this book that was written, um, and it's called The Five Love Languages. And if you haven't ever gone through The Five Love Languages, if you have a spouse, um, it's a great thing to go through. Um, but 
it's, it's written to kind of point out, you know, there's five ways that people communicate with each other. And, uh, and these are the five love languages or how they communicate their love. The first one is words of affirmation. You love to give words of affirmation. You love to speak love to other people or encouragement. And scripture agrees with that, is that we need to encourage each other. We need to spur each other on. The other one is physical touch. You like to hug. You like to greet. You're the one that likes to shake hands or give the pat on the back. And some people enjoy receiving that. They like that physical touch. Children, with your own children, you want to make sure you're hugging them and holding them and actually showing them that comfort. Then you have quality time spent together where that's what we observe here in this story, is we see that Mary is spending quality time listening to the words of Jesus. And then we also have the acts of service, which we see that Martha is performing acts of service. And then there's one last one, and it's the receiving of gifts. Now, it's a wonderful book. It's a wonderful way to look at um, and how we speak to each other and how we communicate our love to each other. But we also need to be careful as believers that we don't confuse the message of popular books or popular, popular ways of communicating our love as the way that Jesus thinks that we need to communicate our love. Though these are great frameworks to understand how we communicate our love, this is not the Word of God, or these aren't, this isn't necessarily what Scripture continues to point back to. You see, too often we can read things and we can do things and we can say, I'm communicating my love by serving people, and I'm communicating my love by just being there and just doing tasks and getting things done, which is very important. We should never stop serving other people. Or you could say, I'm communicating my love because I'm buying a bunch of stuff and or gifts. I'm pulling money out and I'm buying stuff, and that's how I communicate my love, which is wonderful. And if you've been given the gift to be able to do that, why not? That's great. But neither of those either acts of service, serving other people, nor just buying people gifts, should ever replace the importance of simply sitting at the feet of Jesus as Mary did. Why not? Because when you sit at the feet of Jesus and you hear his words and you allow his words to sink into your mind and your heart, and you actually abide by his word on what he says, those things can't be taken away. When you buy objects for people, objects disappear. They're temporary. They're here one moment, and then they're gone the next. They're not that important, even though it's, imp it's nice to buy gifts for people. We never do that in the sacrifice of actually spending time with Jesus, that his love may flow from him to us to other people. We need to spend time with Jesus and let his love flow out of us to the other people that we spend time with. I would say of the five love languages that I read, I believe that Scripture agrees heavily, heavily with time spent with people, is making sure that you're listening to people, that you're learning from people that you love, and that you're learning to love them even deeper by growing in a deep relationship with them. Scripture continues to reiterate that point over and over again, and we see that Jesus lays that down right here, that the most important thing is doing the thing that cannot be taken away from you, and that's listening to his word, building that relationship with Jesus, and making sure that you remember it's not just the duties and the tasks and the getting things done that's important, but what's important is spending time with Jesus. And then I'll end with this, and we all know this one. This is the most, probably one of the most popular and quoted passages, uh, but 1 Corinthians chapter 13, Paul sets this up, and you know this if you know this passage, and Paul is drawing a contrast here too. And he says, he goes through this, this whole argument, he says, if, even, if he speaks with the tongues of angels or gives a word of encouragement, right? If he has, um, if he is, dies at the stake as a martyr, um, if he gives everything he has to the poor, and he almost runs through all the five love languages here, and he does all of these things, but if he does not have love, then he's just a resounding gong and a clanging cymbal. And it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, 
Now abide faith, hope, and love. These three, but the greatest of these is love because you can't take love away. Stuff and things disappears all the time, but love can never be taken away. And that's what me and you as believers need to make sure that everything we do is founded upon. Every action that we take, everything that we do is founded upon the love of Jesus to the purpose of allowing people or letting people or getting people to the point that they may know him deeper and they may grow in a deeper love for him. So that's my encouragement for today. I hope you guys, um, as we go through this next week and we look forward to Christmas and everything that you're doing, remember, don't be busy, 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 busy. Even though you are showing your love for your family by preparing for a party, or you are showing your love for your family by buying them gifts with the finances and, and the gifts that God has given you. But never, ever, ever, ever for a moment think that your service towards your family, preparing a room, preparing a meal, and or buying them gifts, can ever or should ever simply replace sharing in the deep love of Jesus by building a relationship with them, by teaching them, and growing in love with them by speaking to them, by spending time with them as you also sit at the feet of Jesus. Slow down. Make life simpler and simply enjoy your time with Jesus and your family this season. And may it just be built on love. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, I thank you for everybody who's listening. I pray today, Lord, um, that as we look at this season and we can be so distracted by all of the busyness, everything that is taking place in our lives, Father, that we do not forget that the greatest gift is the gift of your love communicated to us, Lord, through your spirit, Father. And I pray that that love enters into our hearts and flows out of our hearts to our friends and our family and they know that by not just the many things that we do for them, Lord, but they know that because they just spend time with us, and we're willing to just spend time with each other, sitting with each other as Mary sat at your feet, simply just enjoying each other's company, talking with each other, getting to know each other, and loving each other deeply. In your name, amen.